Shalom Yasharala. This is the brother Nathan Manat coming at you with another lesson. Lord willing, through the Holy Spirit, it'll be edifying and comforting. But first and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praises unto the Almighty Powers, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Waka Kodash, Yahweh being the true name of the Heavenly Father in the Paleo Hebrew tongue, which means He is, He exists, Yahweh Shai being the true name of the only begotten Son which means he is salvation. He delivers. Rakakodash being the Holy Spirit. I want to give double honors to the head apostles, elders, bishops, teachers of great millstone who rule well and teach well across the four winds. To all the other brothers pushing this truth and sincerity across the nations. Shalom. Those who are scattered abroad, the Israelite foreigners, also pushing this truth. Shalom. This is going out to the tabernacle of David, to the hope of elect, peace and salutations. To the 12 tribes of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Haitians, North American Indians, Central Americans, and uh, those those who fall under the tribes who are scattered and, and uh, those who are foreigners across the world. You know, peace be unto you, Shalom. May we seek repentance and salvation in these latter days. And uh, we're seeking salvation, you know, and we continue to pray for, for salvation in these latter days as you know, Esau and the quote-unquote powers that be continue to come down, continue to come down on us, which is uh, the importance of having great leadership in this truth, having great leadership and departing from folly, from vanity, from sin, transgression, coming to this understanding. We have to hold steadfast. You know, we have to walk this straight and narrow path and we have to suffer our affliction and endure patiently. You know, through much tribulation, will we will those enter the the kingdom of heaven, as the scriptures say, roughly paraphrasing. So, it's the importance of great leadership, and the water to all the leaders, elders, apostles, bishops, a great millstone, who are who are a great example of that leadership to us coming into this truth, and and for those who have continued to labor in this word and this doctrine, you know. So that's why I want to go into the book of First Peter, chapter 5. I'm going to start at the top. So First Peter, chapter 5, verse 1, which reads, The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Hamashiach, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. So those laboring in this doctrine, laboring in this truth, those are the ones who are going to glory in, in, you know, with the Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, you know, and is coming through the powers and blessings of the Almighty Yahweh in that day. And when the kingdom is being rebuilt during the resurrection. Verse 2. Feed the flock of Yahweh, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Exactly. So this is something that we, you know, those who are laboring in this truth and feeding the flock who do so willingly because the spirit was put upon them by Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, the Rokar Kodash, the Holy Spirit was put on them. And they're, you know, the water to the brothers who continue to labor in this truth, labor in this doctrine, feeding the flock. There's no greater greater glory there's no greater honor than to be given that privilege to feed the flock of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai you know that's why the Yahweh Shai roughly paraphrasing this roughly paraphrasing the scriptures you know in uh, one particular chapter he, he states to his to his disciple you know feed my, if, you, if you love me feed my flock does not love me feed my flock he tells him three times so that's the importance the emphasis on continuing to feed the flock and do so willingly. It's not that we have to, we can't have that, you know, uh, you know, we can't have idle hands and we can't have that, that uh, slothful spirit, you know, of like, uh, this is a chore. This is something that we have to do. No, this is, I mean, it is something that we have to do because when we're called upon, yes, we should do it and we should do so willingly. That's the difference. It's not like when you're a child growing up and you hate the the chore of having to take out the trash or 
vacuum the carpet or, you know, clean the toilet, so on and so forth. It's like, no, this is something that's an honor. Many are called, but few are chosen. So that's why if you were chosen to be in the spirit and be in this truth and be able to teach this truth, then do so willingly. I'm going to continue. First Peter 5 and 2. Continue the verse here. Actually, I'm going to repeat it. Feed the flock of Yahweh, which is among you. Take the cover, uh, Salakia, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. So having our mind ready, staying willingly prepared for this, enduring patiently our affliction and knowing that we're going to continue to labor, we're going to continue to suffer as Yahweh Shai suffered, as our forefathers did the prophets before us, so on and so forth. And those, you know, who continue to hold hold fast to the, the law, statutes, and commandments, who have died for this word, died for this truth, died for this faith and the belief of this truth. Verse 3, Neither as being lords over Yahweh's heritage, but being in ensembles to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. That's right, and the crowns of glory. You now we want to have those crowns bestowed upon us, those who are of the hopeful elect, those who who pray for not only salvation, but to be humble servants of Yahweh Shem Shai in the kingdom to come. So there's no greater honor, no greater glory. So that's why we have to continue to labor in this truth and be prepared being being willing to sacrifice anything in this carnal flesh including our lives verse 5 likewise ye younger submit yourselves unto the elder yea all of you be subject to one another and be clothed with humility for yahweh by shem yahweh shai res resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. So humility, being humble, giving that grace, you know. So for us younger brothers, we have to acknowledge and revere our elder apostles, our elder teachers, those who have, have been appointed to us by Yahweh Bashem Yahweh to be teachers, to be leaders. You know, we're amongst their flock. So that's why it's important to continue to acknowledge the elders and continue to give reverence. You know, just like we revere the Father, you know, in the carnal flesh, we revere the Almighty Father. And we have to continue to revere and give that respect to the elders and give that acknowledgement. So they're leaders, you know, leaders of men. The men of the Lord. So the water, once again, double honors. I don't want to go into uh, the book of Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach, going to chapter 24. Let's start at verse 32. And this doctrine, you know, this prophecy, laboring for this, you know, laboring in this word, in this truth. It's a very great honor. And we have to continue to hearken to this truth and to, to know that, you know, if, if the spirit was put upon you, it's a great honor. Great glory. We have to we have to answer that call. We have to fulfill the covenant, the promise that was made through our, our forefathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We have to honor that covenant with the Lord. Honor that contract, that promise. So we're going to go into uh, Ecclesiastes 24 and verse 32. Which reads... I will yet make doctrine to shine as the morning and will send forth her light afar off. That's right. So this doctrine being in this truth, man, it's light. We're vessels of the light of the Most High. You know, we have to be pillars of this light, you know. We have to continue to to spread this truth to, to the nations of Israel, the 12 tribes, our brethren, Yasharala, the believers. And, and continue to, uh, you know, try to wake people up in these latter days because, you know, ultimately, 
the, it's going to come a time where it's, you know, famine of the word. And uh, the prophets are not going to be out there. You know, they aren't going to be able to to be in the, you know, be in their presence. They aren't going to be able to to hear this, you know, whether it be a, the power grid goes down, you know, YouTube goes down, so on and so forth, you know, other platforms, you know, internet, all that, all that stuff, you know, it's going to come a time when that may not be readily available. So that's why we have to continue to push this uh, and, uh, you know, come to terms with this truth. Verse 33, Sirach 24 and 33. I will yet pour out doctrine as prophecy and leave it to all ages forever. So this doctrine, prophecy, leave it to all ages forever. So that's why it's important to understand that this word, this word is forever. You know, there's law, statutes, and commandments, this doctrine, this was written to be followed and adhered to forever, period. It's not something we can just think about in uh, terms of, oh, that was, you know, that was back then, you know, all times have changed or, you know, the old covenant, new covenant, so on and so forth. It's like, no, this, this was, uh, you know, this doctrine, this prophecy, you know, this is something that we have to acknowledge as, as truth and continue to continue to labor in. So we're going to go to 34. And of course, I want to give, uh, you know, the proper the proper acknowledgement to the sacrifices of Yahweh Shai and, and uh, what that means as far as, you know, the new covenant and, and not following certain laws, you know, that, that um, you know, like the old, you know, sacrifices of, of animals and so on and so forth to, uh, you know, to show, uh, you know, to for our sins and whatnot. Because you know those are no, those uh, sacrifices are no longer made, but my point being is that this word lasts forever. Verse thirty-four: Behold, that I have not labored for myself only, but for all them that seek wisdom. So laboring in this truth is is trying to again feed the flock, and continuing to feed those who seek wisdom. You know, wisdom comes from fear of the Lord, fear of the Most High, acknowledging, you know, that the Yahweh Bashem Yahweh is the Almighty Powers, and also fearing the Most High and doing diligent studies, doing doing works, bringing forth ripe fruit, doing, trying to perform righteous acts in the eyes of the Lord Yahweh. So that's why we have to continue to you know labor for this and seek wisdom. In order to edify, you know, as the scriptures say, you know, let all things be done unto edification. So we have to continue to edify ourselves so we can ultimately teach, teach our brethren, teach Yasharala. So I'm going to flip back to Sirach chapter 22. I'm going to go on and start into that verse 13. And, you know, wisdom you know, ultimately comes to those who seek it, but it comes from the Holy Spirit that the Lord will bestow upon those who who are, you know, again, diligently seeking it and who fear the Lord. You know, it's not going to come to, to sodish children and to foolish people, you know. So that's why it's really important to, in these latter days to depart, you know, from those, you know, who seek who seek to sin, who seek to transgress. You know, we can't, we can't surround ourselves with, with people with folly and vanity. You know, we have to continue to seek the Lord. We have to depart, you know, holy people, holy, meaning separate. We have to continue to separate ourselves from the world because the world's full of sin. And those who continue to try to seek, you know, to get back into the world and stay in the world and seek all these carnal things and, and, you know, whether it be fiscal, monetary, you know, career, so on and so forth, you know, all these material goods, you know, everyone's trying to live their best life, going to get that jump shot, you know, going to get the boost mobile, pretty soon it's going to lead to the digital all, and then they're going to be, you know, everyone's willing to, to uh, 
do all they can to stay in the world, as opposed to do all they can to seek salvation, to know the Most High, and follow the law, statutes, and commandments, to walk the straight and narrow path. So many people are willing to sacrifice, you know, time, effort, into so many things that are just ultimately just going to be going to be for naught. You know what I mean? Willing to fucking go slack it and willing to go to the gym, you know, be, you know, and, and no throwing, not throwing shade at those who want to stay fit and, and, and exercise and so on and so forth, you know, do what you got to do. But for those who are making it their life, you know, and, and uh, finding that, that vain glory in it, who boast themselves and exalt themselves in it, you know what I mean? Or, or those who are all about themselves, you know, freaking trying to trying to be Instagram famous and so on and so forth, you know, all that stuff's just folly. So, yeah, wisdom, uh, slakia. It's going to be a uh, Sirach, Ecclesiasticus chapter 22, verse 13. And it reads, Talk not much with a fool, and go not to him that hath no understanding. Beware of him, lest thou have trouble, and thou shalt never be defiled with his fooleries. Depart from him, and thou shalt find rest, and never be disquieted with madness. That's right, so madness, we know what's out there. You know, the club scene, the bar scene, you know. Everyone's out there trying to live their best life. And it's all folly. You know, depart from that stuff, man. Depart from foolery. It's, you know, ultimately it all leads to trouble. We've all been there. Those of us who are living in the world and have come into this truth. You know, those who have committed their, their share of sins. You know, we know what the world has to offer. And, uh, you know, living for yourself. Living for the lust of the flesh. You know, more often than not, that leads to transgression. That leads to sin, breaking of the laws, statutes and commandments given by the Most High to our people. You know, these are given to us. These are the ways of life, the ways of the world, the ways of death. I'm going to continue on. Ecclesiasticus 22 and 14. What is heavier than lead? And what is the name thereof but a fool? Sand and salt and a mass of iron is easier to bear than a man without understanding. That's right. And that's why we have to continue to separate ourselves during this time. Because we've all been there. We, we have friends, family, people we know that we may care about. Maybe even people that we love or once loved. You know, but when we come to see their foolish ways... And, and come to know what they really value. Then that then, you know, the more we come into this truth, the more we realize that it's a benefit. It's a benefit and a blessing to be separated from that foolishness, that folly. And that it's the most high that puts the spirit on us to separate ourselves from that. So that's the importance of being able to be holy, separate. Continue to embrace that. Going to go into verse 16. As timber girt and bound together and a building cannot be loosed with shaking. So the heart that is established by advised counsel shall fear at no time. So wise counsel, seeking the counsel of the brethren, the elders, apostles, bishops, GMS, and everyone under the umbrella pushing the same doctrine, singing the same song, and truth and sincerity. That's wise counsel. So that's why we're blessed to have the brothers who are out there and the elders to, to follow as an example, because we know that those are the ways of life, the ways of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. I'm going to go into verse 17, but to wrap that up, that thought, yeah, we're not going to fear during this time, entering Jacob's trouble, you know, knowing what's coming, medical martial law, it's going to be war, famine, pestilence, civil unrest, sedition amongst men. We know it's coming. And through the Holy Spirit, we have this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding 
given to us through interpretation of the Holy Scriptures, you know, through prophecy. So that's why we can continue to, to have, you know, we can seek that peace, knowing that, that if we continue to hearken and, and walk this path, the straight and narrow path, then we can, we can pray for that, you know, that salvation and that peace in those, in these latter days. Verse 17. A heart settled upon a thought of understanding is as a fair plastering on the wall of a gallery. Mm -hmm. so, so settling on, you know, on these thoughts, on wisdom and understanding, you know, a heart settling on it is as fair plastering as on the wall of a gallery. So making, you know, a gallery pictures, art, things as such, you know, so we can, we can be consistent you know be re we can rely on on this you know through the holy spirit through the powers of yahweh we won't be moved as the scriptures say you know building our house on that rock building our foundation on that rock not on sand finish off here at verse 18 pales set on a high place will never stand against the wind so a fearful heart and the imagination of a fool cannot stand against any fear. That's right. So these fools, they fear. How do they show their fear? By going out and getting that jump shot. Going out and trying to stay in the world and submitting to the unrighteous decrees of Esau. And the other wicked nations as part of that, that wicked council. You know? That's why these... These foolish people, man, they're going to be done for, you know, when the Lord returns through Yahweh Shai and the holy angels. There's going to be a lot of judgments laid down, and they're going to be continued to lay down. They're going to continue to be laid down until that day. So that's why we have to understand what it is and, and separate ourselves, depart from these foolish, these foolishness. You know, I want to go into, uh, we have to understand this truth. You know, because it was given to us through the prophets before us, through our forefathers, through the Lord, through Yahweh Shai. You know, Yahweh Shai had his, his uh, fair share of tribulations and sufferings, affliction. You know, he had to endure hardness, as the scriptures say. You know, he wasn't always taken, accepted as the son of the Most High. Nor was his word always accepted as the truth. Which is why I want to go into the book of John. Book of St. John chapter 8. I'm going to start at verse 42. So this is going to be red letter. Yahweh Shai speaking. St. John chapter 8 verse 42. It reads. Yahweh Shai said unto them. If Yahweh were your father. Ye would love me, for I proceed forth and came from Yahweh. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. That's right. So those who are following their own folly, wickedness, Lies of the devil, you know, devil, meaning deceiver, the serpent, you know, and who's the great serpent? Esau, the other wicked nations that are following his, his, uh, you know, the lead into, you know, captivity, the lead in, into that ditch, you know, you know. They're trying to lead the blind, leading the blind shall fall into a ditch, as the scriptures say. So, you know, that was Yahweh Shai speaking, roughly paraphrasing. So, 
you know, those who are not hearkening to this truth and believing this word for whatever reason, you know, it's all, it's all madness. And they're all going to find themselves in a very bad place if they haven't already when the Lord judgment, when the Lord's judgment comes down upon them. So definitely, God, that's why you got to steer, steer clear of that too, you know. You don't want to be around foolish people, man, when that judgment gets laid upon them because you might end up being a part of that. You know, being a being a victim of unexpected judgment. You know what I mean? Because that's when it always comes. You know, we don't know when that judgment's coming. But uh, yeah, yeah, we don't want to be a part of that. We can't keep the company of fools. So we're gonna go back into Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter twenty-three. I must go to verse twenty-seven. And it reads, And they that remain shall know that there is nothing better than the fear of the Lord. That's right. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And that there is nothing sweeter than to take heed unto the commandments of the Lord. Woo! Look at that. Nothing sweeter. Nothing sweeter than to take heed to the commandments. So let's continue to walk this this righteous path, you know, try to stay on this straight and narrow path to the straight gate. You know, nothing sweeter. Verse 28, it is great glory to follow the Lord and to be received of him is long life. What's that long life? Everlasting life. That's right. You know, long life, perhaps in this, in this carnal flesh, but everlasting life to be given that that glory that honor to serve to be humble servants of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai everlasting life in the kingdom that is great glory to follow the Lord nothing sweeter so for anything that for anything that this world has to offer this carnal flesh appetites lusts none of it matters it's all foolishness it's all folly so there's nothing that we can attain in this world that means a damn thing compared to the glory and the the blessings that the most high Yahweh Shai can bestow upon you meaning Yasharala the 12 tribes for thou art the chosen people <laughs> continue to embrace that so now I want to take it back, going to Sirach, chapter 24. And I'm going to go back to 24. I'm going to start at verse 8, which reads, So the creator of all things gave me a commandment, and he that made me caused my tabernacle to rest, and said, Let thy dwelling be in Jacob, and thine inheritance in Israel. That's right, the inheritance of the Most High. The inheritance. His, you know, that's 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 whom the Lord loves. You know, the holy people, the chosen people. You know, a peculiar people. Also, also roughly paraphrasing the Holy Scriptures, a peculiar treasure. So that's why, you know, we're a chosen people to be placed above all nations. That are on the earth, roughly paraphrasing the scriptures. So that's what the Lord wants. That's who the Lord loves. That's who the Lord wants to serve him. Most importantly, that's who the Lord wants him to. That's who the Lord wants to fear him. His children, the chosen children of Israel. Go into let's continue with Sirach 24 and 9. He created me from the beginning before the world, and I shall never fail. That's right, we can't fail, especially when we're in this truth, in this work, laboring in this doctrine. And we got to continue to hold steadfast, and we can never fail, as long as Yahweh, you know, Yahweh Shai puts that Holy Spirit on us and keeps, keeps us in this truth, keeps us laboring. We can never fail, no matter what we do, for doing the work of the Lord, 
It's the great honor, the great glory of a humble servant. Do so with humility. Do so willingly, with patience. Endure affliction. You know, and no matter what happens, you know, the Lord will, will the Lord's will is going to be done. However, it's going to be a great thing, no matter what that is. Sirach 24 and 10. And the holy tabernacle I served before him. And so was I established in Sion. Likewise, in the beloved city, he gave me rest. And in Jerusalem was my power. And I took root in an honorable people, even in the portion of the Lord's inheritance. That's right. So wisdom taking root, you know, in these beloved people, you know, honorable people, you know, the the portion of the Lord's inheritance, which is Jacob, the seed of Jacob, Yasharala, Israel, princes of the power, you know, the true believers. So that's why we got to continue to understand that, you know, the, the nations, the 12 nations, the 12 tribes, the nation of Israel, that is the Lord's inheritance. You know, that's who the Lord loves. That's who the Lord wants as his servants, the holy people. You know, the Lord's inheritance. Which one takes me over to, uh, can take it over to a quick precept from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, and verse 9. Deuteronomy 32 and 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. That's right. That's the lot of his inheritance. That's who the Lord wants. The portion is his people. Jacob, our forefather, whose name was changed to Israel after fighting, wrestling with the angel for that blessing. So that's why this is, again, something just to indicate that the chosen children, the people of Israel, you know, the 12 tribes, those, that's the Lord's inheritance. That's who the Lord loves and wants. So we have to continue to, you know, fulfill this promise, fulfill this covenant, come to this understanding through the Holy Scriptures, you know, law, statutes, and commandments. Hearken to this for everlasting life is, you know, glory in the kingdom. You know, there's nothing Nothing that can ever compare to that, you know, gold, silver, rubies, so on and so forth, jewels, monetary, fiscal gain, nothing can ever compare to the glory that's going to come when the kingdom is reestablished on earth. And Lord willing, we're all of that number, the believers, the elders teaching under the GMS umbrella, elders on down, Lord willing. You're all of that number. Take it into uh, I'm gonna take it into a book of Psalm, book of Psalms, and uh, gonna take it over to chapter ninety four. And I'm we'll gonna start at verse five, Psalm ninety four and five. They break in pieces thy people, O Lord, and afflict thine heritage. So that's why we have to continue to endure this affliction, endure these sufferings. You know, these tribulations as Yahweh Shai did, as our forefathers did, you know, the prophets and the believers before us, you know, there's, they suffered many afflictions through captivities and, and uh, you know, through many different times, you know, before the coming of Yahweh Shai and thereafter. So that's why we have to continue to, to endure patiently. Because again, that's that's part of our that's part of our lot. That's part of being here in this flesh. You know, we have to prove ourselves, be tried through the furnace of affliction, the furnace of adversity. You know, be refined as silver. So we have to be put through the fiery trial. As, as those are all rough paraphrases of the scriptures. Verse six, Psalm ninety four and six, they slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless. Yet they say, the Lord shall not see, neither shall the God of Jacob regard it. Mm -hmm. So that's what the, 
the wicked powers, you know, Esau. And uh, that's what the these wicked nations, you know, that oppress our people, you know. That's what they continue to think, what they continue to do. They think that we're not, you know, we're not going to be bestowed that blessing, that the Lord, that the Lord's not going to return. You know, that's why they did it for so long. But now they see that all these all these prophecies that are being fulfilled, you know, the Lord's visitation of the world. Now, now they're starting to, you know, they realize, you know, as the scriptures say, the, the devil knoweth, but he, they have but a short time. So now they're amping things up. They're turning up that gear. You know, they're going all out, throwing it in the sixth, you know. They're throwing it, you know, trying to hit that nos. They're trying to, they're trying to speed up everything on, you know, you know, what is it? Uh, Operation Warp Speed, you know, all this other stuff. You know what I mean? They're trying to push that, you know, that jump shot, you know, the boost mobile, the digital all, you know what I mean? They're trying to, they're trying to put all that up on our people. They're trying to dig into hell, these underground bunkers, trying to go into the stars, these space stations and whatnot, but. We know that we know what's going to happen in the return of the Most High through Yahweh Shai and the Holy Angels. And when the fishers turn hunter, woo, we know what's going to happen. That's right. So I'm going to continue on that, uh, Psalm 94. I'm going to jump over to verse 12. Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law. Exactly. So chastening. You know, what father. You know, what good father won't chasten his child, you know? So that's why we have to continue and, you know, we have to continue to to accept this, you know, and, and embrace it. You know, we have to look forward to, ch you know, chastisement. If, if we're going up, that's what we need, you know, to get set right. We need to be corrected. We need to be rebuked, you know? You know, that, that's, that's just the beauty of it. You know, I'm learning something new every day and I'm happy to be, you know, corrected and rebuked. And, and, you know, I pray, I pray to the Holy Spirit, you know, to the, to the most high that, you know, through the powers of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, and the Holy Spirit, that I gain wisdom, knowledge, and understanding through diligent work and, and, you know, staying, you know, staying continuously reading and continuing to, uh, really hearken to this truth, you know? So that's why I know all the brothers out there seek the same type of correction and rebukement when necessary. And that's part of embracing it, embracing this affliction, embracing everything that the Lord, you know, is, is, is telling us is for our own good. That's profitable for us. So we have to continue to look, look forward to that, you know, ultimately because every bit of it can possibly lead to our salvation. You know, so that's why we have to continue to embrace that, you know, and, and be, be willing to be taught out of the law, be chastised. So Psalm 94 and 13, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. That's right. So we're facing these days of adversity. We're constantly, you know, facing affliction, you know, oppression tribulation but we look we can pray and look forward to you know rest you know the hopeful elect we can look we can pray and hope that that rest comes you know we know that this is not our rest so we can pray also that that pit be dug for the wicked and it, it's going to be they're digging their own graves you know by going off and not following the law statutes and commandments of the most high and impressing the children of israel 12 traps so we know what's coming for the wicked verse 14 for the lord will not cast off his people neither will he forsake his inheritance and who's his who's his inheritance jacob israel the children of israel the 12 traps that's his inheritance so he's not going to forsake his people he's not going to utterly destroy them you know there's a remnant of jacob the hopeful elect, the tabernacle of David, the 144. You know, we have something to, that salvation, we have something to pray on and have faith and hope in, belief in, 
that we can, you know, be a part of the Lord's inheritance. Finish off here at 15, Psalm 94 and 15. But judgment shall return unto righteousness and all that and all the upright in heart shall follow it. Exactly. So we have to continue to follow uprightness, you know, because that judgment is going to return unto righteousness. So we have to continue to follow the ways of the upright, continue to walk, pray that we can walk uprightly on this straight, narrow path that the Lord has set before us. So that's why we got to continue to work on this, you know, every day that the Lord provides, because tomorrow's not promised. So Lord willing, tomorrow comes and we'll get an opportunity to, to fulfill, you know, to perform righteous works, you know, fulfill the, the work, the word of the Lord, you know. And now let's go into, uh, going to go into Sirach once again, chapter 24. But I'm going to get a precept from 24 and 22. So like, yeah, just get my spot here. And it reads, oh, so like, yeah, it's going to be 24 and 22. Yeah. And it reads, he that obeyeth me shall never be confounded. And they that work by me shall never do amiss. So again, keep working. Keep getting this and keep trusting in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And we will not be amiss. You know, we'll we'll try to, you know, the Lord will will place us where we're supposed to be as long as we keep on doing the works of the most high. You know, he's gonna place those those angels around us, gonna spirit upon us. Verse 23. All these things are the book of the covenant of the most high Yahweh. So this book. You know, this covenant, these books, these scriptures, these are for the covenant, the remnant of Jacob, the believers, the saints. Even the law which Moses commanded for an heritage unto the congregations of Jacob. The inheritance, again, the, you know, the, or I'm sorry, it's like, yeah, the heritage, you know, unto the congregations of Jacob. So the heritage of Jacob, the seed of Jacob, okay? This is, you know, these are commandments. The congregations, the believers, 144, those who are hearkening to this truth, you know? This is, this, these are, these holy scriptures. These are the ways of life, and these were meant for our people. I'm going to finish off here at verse 24. Faith. Oh, it's like, yeah. faint not to be strong in the Lord that he may confirm you. Cleave unto him. For the Lord Almighty is, Yah is Yahweh alone. And beside him, there is no other savior. Mm hmm. That's right. So we have to continue to be strong in the Lord. Continue to trust in the most high Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shai. You know, that he may confirm us. Confirm us as what? The hopeful elect. Servants. Humble servants. Those who have continued to follow his word. You know, and fear him. You know, we have to continue to, to be humble servants of the Most High. Because he alone is the Lord Almighty. And beside him, there is no other Savior. So that's why we have to. And beside him, you know, that's that's through the powers and blessings of Yahweh, will Yahweh Shai also be the Lord, be our Savior. You know, that salvation is going to come through the almighty powers of Yahweh. So there is no other living God. There is no other living power but Yahweh and who he bestows his powers upon, those blessings. Yahweh Shai, the holy angels. You know, and his and his humble servants, you know, everyone's gonna have, you know, the tabernacle of David will be established, and and Lord willing will be of that number. So we gotta keep on hearkening to this truth, you know, understand that we're the lot, that the inheritance, you know, of the Lord, and that's a true blessing, that's an honor.
it's not something to be taken lightly. You know, it's not something to be uh, overlooked, you know, underappreciated. You know, it's like, yeah, greater than any other blessing that can be bestowed upon you in this, in this flesh. I'll tell you that. Or anything we can even, even fathom, anything we can think of. Nothing can compare to serving the most high in the kingdom. I'm going to finish off here with a quick precept from Psalm 97 and verse 10. Psalm 97 and 10, which reads, Ye that love the Lord hate evil. Exactly. So we that love the Lord, we're sick of this place, you know, and all the all the evil that is running running rampant, you know, all the evil all the wicked counsel and, and Esau's unrighteous decrees, uh, oppression, and ultimately his ways of death. You know, and pretty soon there he's he's aiming for the the younger. You know, he's going younger and younger, old and young. Yeah, he's got no. There's no mercy, you know, whatsoever. So that's like we understand that, but the Lord's not going to have mercy. When the return of Yahweh and the holy angels, and you know, and the visitations of the Lord, yep, those wicked, they're gonna have a hefty bill to pay. So that's why ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. That's right, he's gonna preserve the souls of his saints. The true believers, Tabernacle of David, the 144, you know, those men who are out there, again. The elders, apostles, and bishops of GMS teaching on the highways and hedges, the highways and byways, everyone under the umbrella pushing the same truth and sincerity, the same doctrine, singing the same song. Those, you know, are going to be the souls that the Lord preserveth. So I'm going to repeat this. Ye, the Psalm 97 and 10, ye that love the Lord hate evil, he preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Mm -hmm. Who's the wicked? Esau. Esau and his, his, uh, his devilish pals of the wicked council. Those who oppress the 12 tribes. And have been doing so for thousands of years. And who continue to do so with no remorse. So that's why when the Lord comes, Yahweh Shai returns and the holy angels... They're going to have no remorse. Not only that, but the Lord's going to turn his face from those who do not believe, who have not known him. So that's why we have to seek the Lord while he may be found, as the scriptures say. That's the paraphrasing. So I want to end this lesson now. And uh, Lord willing, it was edifying and comforting to the hopeful elect and uh, to the tabernacle of David, to the true believers, Akim Nakwa, brothers and sisters. All the Israelite foreigners scattered across the world. All right. So the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, Central Americans. All right. Want to want to give all honor, glory, and praises unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakadash. Once again, want to give double honors to the head apostles, elders, bishops, teachers of GMS, Great Millstone, who rule well, teach well, across the four winds. To all the other brothers, <coughs> to all the other brothers, Shalom. Peace be unto you and your families. May you seek repentance and salvation. Hold fast, stay strong in these latter days. All the believers out there, Shalom. Peace be unto you. Till the next time.